the way it works is we have scouts in all the Western provinces of Canada. Okay. We have a head scout that travels a lot and we have a GM that travels a bit, but my job is mostly California. So any, during the season, my job is to identify the best draft eligible players, which are Bantam, Bantam age that year to identify the best players to write reports on them, which I send into our GM and our head scout and to talk to the, talk to the families and the players just to see if there's any interest. And then generally some point in the year, if there's a player, if if there's a player that I'm like, you guys got to see this guy, like one of one of our, either our GM or head scout will travel to see that player. Uh, Most of the, the tier one California teams will travel to Western Canada at least once a year, usually BC. Uh, or for, there'll be some tournament where they'll be able to see a map. But if not, they'll they'll fly down here and go to go to a game with me. But we all of our staff, we go to training camp, which is the end of August every year up in eastern Washington where the team plays. So we assemble there for training camp where we have our draftees, camp invites, and our returning veteran players. And everybody splits into teams and and they scrimmage and we kind of evaluate there. And it's just a really cool time to see the rest of the staff because we've got a great staff and and everybody's together. But other than that, we're kind of all on our, on our own. Okay. And it, how long is that? Uh, is when you guys get back together in Eastern uh, Washington? How long? How Training long camp. It's like three or four days. Three four yeah. days. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I wasn't sure how rigorous it was at that level. It's, it's right before the season starts. So we're for a lot of for the players that we draft. So if we draft a Bantam player, he can't play in our league at fifteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's 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 basically just going to camp to get a look, to like meet the staff, to see the facility, to see the town, to kind of get an introduction of what it's all about, and then he's going to go home and play midget AAA or or whatever, and then when he comes back when he's 15 turning 16, he's got a chance to stay. Okay. Uh, so so for the drafted kids, it's it's a, it's basically their first introduction to the speed and the skill level because they're going to be on on these scrimmage teams that are mixed up between like. 15 year olds and 19, 20 year olds. So right. So be, like as, as young as, like you said, like 15 who are yeah. at, at a high school age, really. And yeah. some of the 18, 19 or 20 year olds even that are yeah. looking to go pro. Yeah. And do a lot of them who start at 15, are they, are they waiting till they're about 19 to get drafted or, or I know the draft NHL is, draft really 18, is 18, right? It's 18. 18? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And how many of them are, have you seen that are going through uh, your guys' team and training that are uh, making it and getting drafted at age 18? Uh, we have guys drafted every year. Uh, we had a couple years ago, we had uh, Michael Rasmussen, who is our captain. He's playing for the Detroit, Detroit Red Wings now. Uh, Carrie Price has played, played, played in our program. It was before my time. Who plays for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Brandon Carlo, who plays for the Boston Bruins, uh, was, was on our team. So a lot, a lot of these guys are going to go pro, maybe not the NHL. So when you, when you finish your junior hockey career with us, let's say for every year you played with us, you've got a year of books and tuition. That's kind of like in the bank ready for all you. If, if you, if pro hockey doesn't work out for you, you can kind of cash in on that scholarship money. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. So the, the kids aren't, uh, you know, no, it's a, it's a good deal. A so you're, program. when you're done, you have 18 months to get to, to cash in on that money. Unless you sign an NHL contract, then you don't get it. But, okay. But well, if you, sign an NFL, you probably don't need it if you sign. Don't need it. Yeah. So, but but you could go. You could go. Let's say you. Let's say your draft age was eighteen. You didn't get drafted, or you got drafted but didn't get signed. So your agents out there like trying to get you a get you a job. Like, hey, East Coast League, American Hockey League, Europe. So when you finish with us, you can go for eighteen months and or a year. You could go try pro hockey somewhere, and. If you dig it, you're off. You go. You're you're a pro hockey player. If you don't like it or it doesn't work out, you come back. You cash in. You take your scholarship money, and you get on with your life. You go get a degree. And what's cool about it is you can take that money and go to any school that you want to go to. Oh, that's great. Yeah, there's, there's no uh, there's no restrictions there. Then that's great. You can't you can't play D one hockey, but you okay. could go to a D, you could go to a D one school. If you go to a Canadian university to get your degree, you can play hockey up there. Okay. Wow. Okay. That, I mean, that seems like, I mean, if that seems like a passion of yours as a, as a kid and you have the, have the skill and the talent and the, and the will seems like a pretty good program. It's, I think it's the best path to be a pro hockey player. I mean, not, not everybody's going to be an NHL player, but if you really want to make a living playing hockey somewhere, uh, I think that junior hockey is the best way to get you there. Just, just because of the, 
the schedule and the way that the just the grind you're on the ice every day the travel it really sets people up for for that kind of uh that kind of a lifestyle and you say that more more so than a d1 as we're talking about like i think i think d1 is great i think that with it with junior you get you kind of get everything sooner okay you get you get in front of nhl scouts sooner you get to find out if you're going to be pro sooner mm. and then if you're not you get to get on with your life sooner Whereas if you're a D1 player, you're probably going to be coming out of school maybe in 20, 21, 22. Most guys that are elite, that, that are D1 players, aren't going to go all four years. Right. So you're kind of wasting, you're kind of wasting your time. You're playing like 30 games as opposed to 72. You're not on the ice every day. Uh, so, but I, I don't think that there's one way that's like good and one way that's bad. I think that I mean, my job is to is to introduce parents and players to this opportunity to what our league can provide it's not for everybody mm -hmm. uh, but but unfortunately what i found is here in california is most of our elite players come through elite programs and most of those coaches came up through usa hockey and the usa hockey has a definite path like you're going to go to prep school or the national team development program and you're going to go play college hockey like usa hockey is not on the same page as Canadian major junior, like they're kind of in conflict. Mm. And so I find out, I find myself having to debunk a lot of things that I've heard when I talk to parents that they've heard from coaches or other parents who heard from coaches. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to bash D1 hockey because I think it's great. Right. But I'm just trying to, I'm trying to present this as an opportunity. Like not everybody in California is going to get a D1 scholarship. It's just not going to happen. Well, yeah. I mean, that, and, that goes for any sport, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Now some some do. I mean, players yeah. are good enough now. We've got guys going going D one, and I think that's great for California hockey. But my job is basically to be like, look, this is what we can do for you, and this is what we can do at the end if, if pro hockey doesn't work out for you.